Hey all, this is David Fuxa. So, um, doing a little, little bit differently with the recording here. Um, I'm trying a different type of uh, recording setting so I can see if I this captures this a little bit better. But we'll just get back into Tome here. So we finished off last time here in the uh, Archmage area of Ang Angolwen, and we are going to uh, go to the store here and read a little bit about this um, lore before we just head off and you know go wherever in the world. So let's here lie this one, and of course we need a nice little voice to go along with it. So I'll be right back, right after I uh, get my voice. Lecture on humility by Archmage Lunale. It were it were some years now since twain of our brightest students left Angolin, sullied by our veil of secrecy and our duty. It still lies heavy on my heart to think of what they could accomplish within our private circle. I, I but hope that one day they will return, and they will understand the reasons behind our solemn mission. But I must think of the future. For too many are the regrets of the mind long past, and to hold their burdens over long is to be crushed. I must think of ye young acolytes, who start now in the learning of our lores. I must explain to ye our mission, our purpose, our justification, so that ye understand all we do and why. In secrecy we operate, trying to heal the harms of our past, trying to build a better future. For our pants is great, and never shall be forgotten in all Eal the terrors of spellblaze. I should know well, for I was aware. But a young mage was I, though not without promise. I knew of the Shala and Mace's experience on the Shelter Ruins. I and I were jealous of the powers they sought to unlock. No fear or caution had I in my arrogant youth, thinking only of opportunities and glory. He willed that thought. Two thousand... Oops. 2,600 cycles of the sun had passed above my head, and yet still I can't shake the memory of the day of the sky turned to flame and the earth was torn to shreds. I felt the magic in the air, the sun unleashing the arcane energies beyond our, anyone's control. I knew in an instant that the Sherwin had unlocked the power of the fire portals, but the forces were far beyond our expectations. I saw in a few seconds the streams of blazing energy tear through the sky above our heads, and then rain down in crimson plumes of destruction. It was all I could do to put a shield about myself, and the burns I suffered were terrible, such that the scars remain to this day. No one about me survived. Still, I remember my sister, and there was a shortened scream as she stood beside me. Her skin flayed off by the terrible energies, her body consumed by a pyre of flame. Her ashes strewn by the great tombs of the earth. Twenty-six centuries have passed, and still I do not wait to sound that scream. Many were the loved ones I lost that day. And I were not alone. Countless perished across the lands, and countless more died in the chaos which followed. Then the spell hunt began, and the people rose against the arrogance of nature and began slaughtering us mercilessly. After the spell blaze, our abilities were in disarray. Our mountain was thundered. We were nigh to census, and it took great effort to gather many of us together, and found the hidden city of Anglewin. A great many nations were killed in the riots that followed I and many instances too, for the stress was rife, for the thirst of blood all-consuming. But alas, the suffering did not end there. The effects of the spell blaze can still be seen today in tortured lands and blighted earths. In the age of dusk, it were much worse. Now disease rose, plagues swept across all cities, so it seemed brought to nothing. All our races came close to extinction, and the age of darkness came upon all learning and enlightenment. Feudal lords and bad gangs fought amongst what little healthy lands were left. Whoops, the blessed continued to ravage what three people remained. That was when I did begin our secret missions to repair the world, to make right the errors of our actions. In South Operation, we visited broken lands and used our power to heal, not destroy. Many centuries it took, but at last the after effects of the spell blood began to diminish, and people began to rebuild. Ah, how much hope was in me then? But foolish were I to think it could be so easy. 
The wounds of the owl struck deeper than mere diseases on the surface. The poison went down much further, and the cracks tore through the very roots of our world. One dark and stormy day, a great chasm swept the forth from the east, and the land rose five hundred leagues into the sky. We could do not but gasp in horror as whole seas, whole races were swept into the sea. The contest were sheer apart from all y'all forever changed. It was a sight to humble even the greatest archmage. I and humility is what I teach to ye now. Know we well that there are forces out there which dwarf ye into insignificance. Know as well that they had no glory, no pride, for they are the forces of ultimate destruction, which brings only terror and pain. Our mission is to help the world. Our penance is to act in secret. Old fools remain, and new threats do arise, but all must be dealt with from beyond our cloak of silence. The mistrust of our ilk still lies deep in people's minds, and there are even those who hate us with a violent passion. But the world is changing, and perhaps one day we shall be accepted again as a society. Until then, remember well this lesson of humility, and in the open world, keep you secret and keep you safe. Lecture on a Nature of Magic by Archmage Terralin. What is magic? A study by Archmage Tazimir Terralin. How uncouth and common it must seem, and yet it is the one I am asked most often, even by some of our most learned students. Too often we teach the art by practice and imitation, and concentration on the end effects, without teaching in greater detail of the underlying principles. Just as a musician may merely on his harp, without knowing how the sound arises from the vibration of the strings, so a mage may make use of magic without realizing the true forces at work. In this document, I hope to give learning on the nature of magic, and how underlying effects can give rise to all wondrous fruits we can produce. Alchemists will tell you that the world is made up of many basic materials, lead, copper, iron, gold, and so on. They are fixated on splitting things down into these components and investigating how they interact with each other. However, there is more to the world than this. Certainly, they represent the physical makeup of things, but they do not show the forces and energy that bring everything into motion. The forces of fire, cold, lightning, and life itself all very real effects, and these we call the elements of the Yao. True Archmage is interested in the interaction of these elemental forces of the world, and manipulating them to his or her need. The elemental forces exist naturally in the world, and weaved around all things in an all-encompassing canvas. They move, vibrate, and resonate by the familiar materials of this world and effects of each play heavily on one another. All creatures naturally make use of these elements, and some are more tuned to these threads than others. With great training and practice, we can become more tuned to these wild forces ourselves, and doing so can match the speed of wolves, the strength of bears, the tenacity of trents, and even the immense natural power of dragons. But there is another way of gaining access to these elemental forces, a more direct way though some would call it unnatural. Long ago, people discovered with much training how to concentrate their wills to pluck the elemental threads directly. This can release great energies, and these can be uh, shaped to reduce real effects in the world. Plumes of fire, bolts of lightning, and blasts of ice can all be called forth by these suitably trained. The true masses of magic can go on much further, combining many resonant forces to create complex physical effects. The tapping of all threads can be a draining task, required much effort of will to sustain. This is what we versed in the arcane called mana. That mental stamina dedicated to the interaction with the elements of the world. Continual use of magic is like the constant lifting and holding of heavy weights, and eventually one will find one's capacity drained. Practice allows one to build up greater pools of mana, and certain wounds and spells can gradually build extra reserves to be called upon as needed. Magical runes and items are viewed with attachments to certain elemental threads. This requires delicate work by experiencing gifted enchanters. The most intricate of mag magical artifacts demand many years of work. You use intense mental effort to permanently tune the core materials to the right elemental energies. Gemstones are especially easy to work with in this craft, and alchemists use them often to bring about elemental effects. Some believe that magic is inherently wrong and the so-called twisting of elements in one's will can only lead to terrible things. As students of Anguin, I would assume you disagree. 
Magic is simply an extension of the force of nature, and we are do and we not natural creatures that use it. But remember that magic is still a powerful force that can be used for good or ill. Magic is indeed a tool of immense value. Use it wisely. All right, so uh, that was just a couple of the um, lore found within the library of Anguin. And as you can see here, we also got some runes that we could pick up if we want to. Um, we got like the teleportation rune, activate this rune to teleport randomly in a range of 61 within a minimum range of 15. It uh, affects skill if your willpower stat. And um, there's other stuff here, warrior shielding rune, activate this rune to create protective shields, lowering at most 150 damage for four turns. It affects skill if your strength. So these warrior ones are, you know, based on strength. Now I've actually got a bunch of stuff here. I'm not actually using any of this, so I'm gonna sell, sell. I don't know what this is used for. Uh, Activate this rune to create a protective shield absorbing damage. Okay, that's a shielding rune. I want to keep that. Um, well, I don't really need these for arcane ritual, so I'll sell these. The reason I'm selling a lot of this stuff is just because of the simple fact that um, I don't really need to use any of this stuff. It's useful, but not really at the moment. So let's see here. This will give me physical save 5, maximum life 43, and light race of 2. This compared to uh, the one that does nothing, I think we'll want to use this over it. That gave me a little bit of gold, but it should be known I don't have a whole lot of gold at this point, so buying the lore and the um, shallow in place is going to be kind of difficult. Here's a couple shops, though. The Shine Jewel. Uh, let me see your wares. So this guy has, you know, rings and stuff like that. This is a quick look around all this so you can see it all. This guy has some more um, infusions and such I can use if needed. The tools of art, and this guy's just got um, staves and such. Uh, I've already done that, so be happy. I don't think there's much I want to do here at the moment. What's over here? Princess Mage and Tempest. All right, well, we're done, I think, so let's just head out. So at this point, my character is well underway, and um, what I really want to do now is probably visit the uh, other dungeons in the world. But here's the thing. I'm thinking about possibly starting up some uh, new characters just so I can show you the sign locations like the Flora and the Shalora and Elves, uh, the Dwarves, and... Um, Potentially also start up an Archmage since uh, the Archmage class actually starts in Anglowin as opposed to other places, so some Banffers are doing that. Um, I also found Look here. Look around. Oh, okay, Shift. So I found out how you can look around the map here. Just like press L and then you can look around. And press Shift and it'll let you look around too. Kind of useful. Um, I might go Shalaran first. There's the town of Urk across the sea. There's the Lumberjack Village where if the, uh, you know, they got the Lumberjack gave me that quest for over there. Um, All right, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to uh, save this character now. And I think we're going to start for Lauren. So save the game. We'll go to main menu. I think this is going to save it again, which is, oh well. Guess I could have just gone away. 
But we're safe and sorry, I guess. Alright, so we're going to start a new game. So this isn't like, uh, Tome isn't like Dungeon Crawl Sun Soup, where you only have like one character on the go. Unless you screw around things, so... Um, now that, uh, basically, I'll look, I did unlock an Archmage class, so now I have this here. Now, um, the Archmage is the class that you can use and all that. Um, since we're in here, maybe I'll do just a little overview of all the different races and species that I currently have available, as well as the Archmage that I just got. So, there's, um, right now, there's four, um, species, and there's subspecies for the elves and the humans, and eventually for the, um, undead to come later. You have the humans, who are one of the main races of Magiel, along with the halflings. For many thousands of years, they fought each other until events and great people unified all human and halfling nations under one rule. Humans of the Allied Kingdom have known peace for over a century now. Humans are split into two categories, the Hires and the Rest. Hires have latent magic in their blood, which gives them higher attributes and senses along with flying life. The rest of humanity is gifted with quick learning and mastery. They can do and become anything they desire. And they include the Hires, which are a special, special branch of humans that have been imbued with latent magic since the age of Allure. They usually do not breed with other humans, trying to keep their blood pure. They possess the gift of the Pureborn, which allows them to regenerate their wounds once in a while, as you know I've so shown you already. And of course they have special modifiers and no negative modifiers for themselves, though they have a small experience penalty. We also have the Kornak. The Kornak side is humans from northern parts of the Allied Kingdoms. Humans are inherently a very adaptable race, and as such, they give, gain a talent category point at birth. I was only gain one at uh, levels 10, 20, and 36. And the Quarnics are basically your bread and butter um, average people. They don't have any stat modifiers, they get 10 life per level, they don't have experience penalty. Uh, they don't even have a racial tree, so if you play human, uh, you don't have like you know this gifted a highborn, or, or gifted a uh, pureborn. If you go to Elves, you don't have, like, the Grace of Eternals. You don't have anything for a Kornak. They just have a category point, which you can throw wherever you want. It's kind of useful if you're not really using it. You know, the racial talents, but, uh, you know, it's also a setback if you uh, possibly, like, want benefit for, like, the Floor 1 or the Shallower 1 or the Dwarf 1. Because Dwarves can, like, have higher stakes due to the resilience of the Dwarves. Yep. The Elves can have, um, you know, resistances and increased damage, and it really helps. Um, the Shallower and Elves have close ties with Magic of the World, and produce some past many great mages, yet they remain quiet and try to hide their magic from the world, for they remember too well the spellblaze and the spell hunt that followed. They possess grace of the eternal talents, which allows them to boost the speed every once in a while. These guys have negative 2 strength, uh, but better dexterity, they have very high magic and even higher willpower. So these guys are your bread and butter mages, and um, they uh, do quite well. Uh, the elves as a whole are Usually named as a whole elf, but this is incorrect. The elves are split into three separate races, albeit related, in which only two remain in the current age. Elves usually live about 1,000 years, and except for the Shallowin who magically sustain themselves forever, their view of the world varies widely across different elven races. So you've got two different races, and then there's the floor here. It should be noted that the Shallowin are like spellcasting elves. The floor, however, are more naturist, you know, tree hugging type elves. So floor and elves have spent most of their ages hidden within their forests seldom leaving them. The ages of the world have passed, and yet they remain unchanged. Their affinity for nature and their reclusion have made them great protectors of the natural order, often opposing their shallow cousins. They possess the wrath of the internal talents, which allows them to boost through damage but inflicted and resisted once in a while. So these guys have uh, basically higher damage but uh, and a higher uh, defense and reduction. So it's really good for them. They are not as good as magic as the Shaloran, and it reflects that in the fact that they have a negative 2 magic enhancer and less willpower, but they do have a lot more dexterity and strength to make up for it, and one extra constitution. And they have a pretty big experience penalty for all of it, so compared to humans, they level very slow, but they're stronger nonetheless. And then we've got halflings. Halflings are, it should be noted that um, if you go just look at ear, they're just the same as if the halflings have, you know, their things showed off there. The halflings are a race of very short statured, rarely exceeding four heat and height. They are like humans in that they can do just about anything. They set their minds to, and yet they excel at ordering and slaying things. Halfling armies have brought many kingdoms to their knees, and they kept the balance of power with the human kingdoms during the Age of Allure. They possess the luck of the little folk, which allows them to increase their critical strike, chance, and saves for a few turns. So these guys have um, an increase in critical strikes, and they have advanced luck in all things, really. Um, now here's stuff I want to do. I'm just going to quickly expand this window, so you can see this a little bit better. 
And I hope I didn't freeze window on me. One moment. All right, I was hoping that uh, expanding the window will let me see this a little bit better, but sadly, um, the halfling and it's this is not showing really. Oh, there it goes. So I can use this uh, keys to move down. So as you can see, they have a much higher luck than most races, but they have lower strength. So these guys are just very lucky halflings. Um, they have like a little bit more life than uh, you know the Florin or the uh, humans, but they have experience probably to match it. Um, and then we've got the dwarves over here. Dwarves are secret people, hailing from the underground homes of the Iron Throne. They are a sturdy race and are known for their masterwork. Yet they do they are not well loved for having left other races to fend for themselves in past conflicts. All dwarves are united under um under the Empire and their love of money. And let's see here. There's the dwarf. Um they possess the resilience of the dwarves, which allows them to increase their armor, physical, and spell saves for a few turns. They have very high strength but low dexterity, very high constitution, but uh they have low magic, high willpower, but um they have, you know, that's just pretty much it. They, uh, they aren't mages, they aren't archers, but they're very, very strong. They make really, really powerful berserkers if you play them. And they have very high armor and saves to go with it. And, of course, they have lots of life and a very small experience probably compared to, like, the halfling over here, which has, like, uh, whoops. Whoops. Didn't want to select that, but oh well. And they have, like, oh, I guess the halflings do have a bit lower than the dwarves, but oh well. Um, uh, we're not going to play Hathling, we're going to go to Elf, we're going to go to Florin. And, uh, let's see here. Let's go look at the, some of these classes here, too. The warrior train in all aspects of physical combat. They can be juggernauts of destruction, wielding two-handed greatswords and massive ironclad protectors with gleaming shields. We have the Berserker. He, uh, this is the one I think I'm currently using. The Berserker wields huge two-handed weapons of destruction, bringing pain and death to his foes as he cleaves them in two. A Berserker usually forfeits all ideas of self-defense to concentrate on what he does best. Killing things. Their most important stats are strength and constitution. So the dwarf, which has strength and constitution, has stat modifiers does very well. And they also get a little bit of dexterity for just a little bit more defense if you need to. Uh, we have next the bulwark. The bulwark specializes in weapons and shield combat, really leaving cover of many protective techniques. A good bulwark is able to withstand terrible attacks from all sides, protected by his, her shield, and when the time comes, lash out at her foes with incredible strength. Their most important stats are strength and dexterity. Um, they can also dwarves can also make fairly good bulwarks if you play them. I mean, I mean the the strength and like the, the dex thing, it doesn't really matter. To, they're you can go strength and constitution on bulwark and it'll work just fine. Um, archers are dexterous ranged are fighters able to pin their foes to the ground and rain down a carpet of arrows on them. Skilled archers can fire special uh, shots that pierce and cripple or pin their foes. Archers can become good with ear longbows or slings. Their most important stats are uh, dexterity and strength when using bows, or cunning when using slings. So you want uh, dexterity and cunning for using slings, or dexterity and strength for using bows. So de depending on what you're using, um, I guess with strength and cunning, the dwarf could be, let's see here. The dwarf has, uh, you know, not bad cunning, so you probably could make a fairly good archer of a dwarf, maybe. Alright, the Arcane Blade is a warrior who has been touched by the gift of magic. Their use of magic is innate, not really studied. As such, they do not naturally regenerate mana and must use external means of recharging. They can cast spells from a limited selection, but have the unique capacity to channel their attack spells from during the attacks. They are adept with two hand weapons for the sheer destruction they can bring. Their most important stats are strength, cunning, and magic. And uh, as you can see there, they have a little boost to strength and cunning and magic. But uh, you know, and those are the three stats they're really looking into. There's also another warrior, but I haven't locked him yet, so we'll not worry about him just yet. Um, rogues are masters of tricks. They can strike from the shadows and lure monsters into deadly traps. As you saw with um, the uh, roguish characters that uh, struck me in the uh, Corpus Pool, um, Corp Pool ruins, they uh, can blind you, so that's the smaller tricks. All right, so right now I've got the rogue and the shadow blade um, unlocked. Rogues are masters of tricks. A rogue can get behind you and notice and stab you in the back for tremendous damage. Rogues usually prefer doable daggers. They can also be become trapping experts, detecting the sucker traps as well as selling them. 
their most important stats are dexterity and cunning. They get a boost to strength, a bigger boost to dexterity, and a huge boost to cunning. And it's actually worth knowing that you can actually use slings on these guys if you want, and it'll do pretty well with them. Shadow Blades are rogues that are touched by the gift of magic, able to kill with their daggers under a veil of stuff while casting spells to enhance their performance and survival. Their use of magic is innate and not really studied. As such, they do not naturally regenerate mana and must use external means of recharging. They use schools of phantasm, temporal division, and conveyance magic to enhance their arts. Their most important stats are dexterity, cunning, and magic. So these guys are like much like the um, warrior's uh, arcane blade. They're like a hybrid of like warrior and spellcaster. And then we got the mage classes. Mages are wielders of arcane powers, able to cast powerful spells of destruction or heal their wounds with nothing but a thought. The alchemist is a manipulator of materials using magic. They do not use the forbidden arcane arts practiced by the mages of old. Such perverters of nature have been shunned or actively hunted down since the spell blaze. Alchemists can transmute gems to bring forth uh, elemental effects, turning them into balls of fire, torrents of acid, and other effects. They can also reinforce armor with magical effects using gems and channel arcane staffs to produce bolts of energy. Though normally physically weak, most alchemists are accompanied by magical golems, which they construct and use as bodyguards. The golems are enslaved to their powers master's will and can grow in powers as their master advances through the arts. Their most important stats are magic and constitution. So this guy is like your, um, I'm not really a mage, but I am a mage type character. And uh, he has a powerful golem that walks around him. So he's kind of like your, uh, I wouldn't say pet class type, but he's like, he's got a bodyguard that goes around him all the time. And then we've got the Archmage, which is, however, um, your uh, bread and butter mage. The Archmage devotes his whole life to study of magic above anything else. Most Arc Magi lack basic skills that others take for granted, like general fighting sense, but they make up for it with their raw magical power. The Arc Magi start with knowledge of many schools of magic. However, they usually refuse, have, um, to, refuse to have anything to do with necromancy. Most Arc Magi have been trained in a secret town of Anguin and possess a unique spell to, tele to tele teleport to it directly. Their most important stats are magic and willpower. So let's look over here. They've got five magic and three miller and one cunning. As you can see, just from the life thing, they, these guys suffer a whole lot from getting life per level. Uh, if I just look at the alchemist, he too ha suffers a little bit. The rogue, um, I don't think the rogues are as bad, but yeah, they just have zero. Shadow Blades is zero. And the war is over here. When I look at him, three, two, zero. And the Arcane Blade has two. So that's just an overview of the races. Um, the floor, since they are not so great with magic, I don't want, I want to steer clear of that a little bit, but they would do okay with... Um, this being general fighters or perhaps rogues or anything like that. Um, I think we'll go floor and archer because that seems like a good mix. You know, strength and dexterity for an archer. So I can show you off this a little bit of the archering for this guy. So let's do that. So archer. And then we see, as you see from the top corner, this guy over here is uh, changing to an archer for me. So we'll call this guy. Okay, for some reason my mouse isn't working at all. So I'm having to use my keyboard constantly. Um, Davian Archer. Uh, get all the way down to play. There we go. All right, so we're back here, and let's see here. So this guy's got. Um, let's go over to race. All right, how do I get over to, uh... All right, tab does it. Okay, so here we are. Or I can just mouse over it and it'll work. Looks like I got this back. Yeah, I've got my mouse back. Okay. So, um, he's got uh, Race of uh, Falar, a town Calgary King's Talents that you may learn. Uh, this is their racial territory. And they get the Raffle Woods, which, uh, when you call upon the power of the internals, they increase their damage or induce damage done to them. And it scales with willpower. They also have Unshackled, uh, they have been free people living in the Blood Force and never caring much about the world's size, so they have physical saves. They have Guardian of the Wood, you're part of the Wood, it shields you from corruption. And then natu uh, Nature's Pride, Trents of Global Reasons, these guys basically let you summon Trents. So these guys have very naturist, naturistic type of uh, talents and they're actually really powerful. Uh, many people will choose Florin just for the racial category. Um, 
I've also got the archer trees over here. So let's see here. I've already got bow mastery. And uh, I also have uh, the sling mastery too. I don't really care about slings, but I'll keep them just for this little while. Um, I'm going to need dexterity to level this stuff up. So I want to level that up quickly. And... I also have life too. But well, we'll, we'll focus on dexterity for now. I'll get that up and then I'll eventually be able to do bow mastery. And at level 2, I grant one more reload per turn. That's cool. So let's see. A steady shot. Um, a steady shot doing um, increased damage. And then we've got aim. Aim's actually really good when you get to it. But uh, until you get to it, I don't have it. Flare. You fire a burning shot doing um, uh, fire damage to your target. And lining up the area around your target for a race of 1. At level 3, it has a chance to blind for a few turns. That's kind of cool. Uh, let's see. I'll click this once. And I'll get that level 2, so I think I might want to want this. Maybe. Crippling shot. Use your target speed. That could be useful. Pitting shot. Scatter shot. All this stuff is very important. So. Piercing arrow. You fire an arrow to cut through anything. Piercing multiple targets. Dual arrows. You fire two arrows at tar target hitting and damaging nearby foe if possible. Um, I won't be able to get any of this right now, so. Just focus on what I can get. Uh, quick recovery. Don't really need that. Don't need that just yet. Uh, we'll just go for this for right now. And I do have down here the techniques on the cunning and dirty fighting, but we won't worry about this just yet. Uh, it might be worthwhile if I was doing like a slinger to uh, go with the dirty fighting because this thing relies on, uh, I think, cunning. I'm not going to worry about it too much though. And then we got over here combat techniques. So I can rush toward a target if I want to. Which makes no sense for an archer, but okay. You focus strikes. You get perfect strike. Blind speed. Generic points. Alright, let's see here. I've got disengage. Jump away free goods from your target. That'll be very useful. So I want that right away. Um, I can also get dagger mastery. Won't worry about any of this other stuff though. And I think that'll be good enough. So let's just get into it. And I'll start showing you the uh, Florin. Alright, let's get into my voice and I'll be right back. Welcome, Davian Archer. You are of the Floran, the elven race closest to nature. Your people have lived for thousands of years in their forests, rarely taking part in the events of the outside world. Yet, when their home is threatened, the Floran elves can prove to be fearsome combatants. You lived a peaceful life deep in the forest for many years, but lately you have grown luscious and have decided to step into the world. You have decided to venture into the old wild places looking for ancient treasures and glory. You have come to the western side of Florin Forest to the lair of Norgos. Norgos was a steadfast ally of Florin, protecting their western border, but lately he has grown corrupt, even attacking Florin. To the east of Chatur, the Florin capital, lies a dark part of the woods. Ever since the spell blaze, this area has been corrupted. Wildlife there have been transformed. After days of travel, you have found Norgos' lair and enter it. What will you find there? Alright, so here we are in Florin, uh, what do you call it? Um, the Norgos Forest, which is near the Florin capital. I'm just gonna move up here a little bit. There's a fox. I think it's, uh, let's see here. Here's where I want to make sure I have my key bindings right. So, key bindings. And, um, let's see here. We've got a whole bunch of stuff I can do. Cancel. I'm just going to go down here. Attack. Or actually, maybe it's uh, these keys I use right here. Uh, let's just look around. I've got shoot. Shoot your bow or sling. Okay, so that's really what I want, want to do right there. The, uh, shoot thing right there. So two, shoot, 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 and he's dead. Now something to note here is that you actually have a, a limited amount of ammo before you start running out. So what you want to do is you want to reload. So reload your quiver or a shot pouch at a rate of one shot per turn. So I just click this and I start reloading. And as you move around it'll reload as you do. So your thing's full. Very useful. Um, let's see here. Flare. Say shot, disengage. 
Let's go here. And I will move you over this direction. Or now we do it this way. This is kind of like the uh, wild infusion here, which uses physical effects, so I'll put them to together with themselves. And let's just start all exploring. Alright, there's a snake. So, let's see here, I want to do two. 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 And here's where I want to disengage, so one. And we're going to go disengage in this direction. Alright, I have to click on the guy to disengage from, so I move in the opposite direction that he's going with. And then you just disengage. I want to reload, so go down here, make sure I have reload going. And then I want to start backing up. This has a reload. Alright, we're full. Let's just start firing at these guys again, so... Two, 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 two and they're all dead. Alright, so reload, so what's here? Reload your quiver. It's actually kind of annoying having to do this through here. I'm used to like reloading through like, you know, pressing R. But whatever, it'll, it still works. Alright, there's another snake, so two. Uh, I guess I can't hit him because he's too far away. And let's reload. And there's another one. Move forward. Two, two. He's dead. Reload. Two. Back up. Shoot, shoot, shoot. He's dead. I want to reload. Move away, move away, move away. Fire, 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 fire. And I want to disengage. That didn't work too well because I'm not able to disengage into a wooded area. Uh, let's just reload. And we want to just fire. And he's dead. And I got poison there, but that's fine. I can strike that off. Reload. And let's start to uh, rest and all that. Here's a, 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 a jelly, so shoot him. And let's see, re reload. I wonder if I can melee or, uh, at all with this character. Which should be kind of useful, I guess, if I get into that sort of situation. Uh, go over here. We have ourselves a cut purse. The lowest of thieves, they are just learning the tra tricks of the trade. Alright, well, uh, let's see here. I want to shoot you. Let's see if I can shoot you something better. Um... Let's hit him with this. And we'll do this. I want a disconnect from the wolf. And this will start shooting at these guys. It, even though these are like techniques, they still take up arrows though, so you want to be careful of just using those. Um, I'll shoot him again. Can I believe this guy? I can believe that guy. Cool. That's good to know. Um, shoot. Shoot. Ow. Shoot. Let's just hit him with this uh, stay shot. And he's dead. Alright, we've got him. Reload. Heal up. I actually got phase door ruined. That'll be kind of useful, I think. But for now, we'll go over here. Shoot. 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 And let's reload. Go to my inventory. And let's see, I got ruins. I think. One moment, I'm being called. I need to stop this. Alright, sorry for the uh, um, pause there. Of course, it was no time for you. Um, basically, I had to do an errand. Anyways, I'm back. So, let's see here. Transparent Chest has got some stuff in it. I want to get this um, Titan's Phase Door Ruin out of here because this can be used for getting me out of uh, sticky situations. So, I actually want to use this. Move the normal inventory. I want to move this away. Actually, we'll wield this because I don't have any boots. So, wield. Okay, let's do it like this. Can I not wear this? Oh, it requires an armor train for me to use this stuff. Okay. Well, we'll move this to the normal inventory right now. Just because it's not useless, so. This thing I want to use. There's my face to ruin if I need it. I may be terrible, but I can still use this. And onward. There's a snake. Let's just melee these snakes. Let's just see how well I do against them. Okay, I don't melee too well. So that's good to know. Melee is not my thing. Do this. 
Do this, do this, do this. Reload. What about these guys? Two, two. Uh, these are iron gauntlets, pick them up. And we'll look at these gauntlets for wearing. These require our armor training. These don't. Okay, so I got some boots finally. <clears throat> um, I guess we'll keep this just in case I need it. Uh, Bicky, you can use pickaxes to dig like trees and stuff, so that you can you know make like paths for yourself. It's sometimes useful to have around. Um. Let's see, this bow. Eh, I don't know. Uh, iron gauntlets. I can't use these because they, they cover me, but I'll just keep them for now. Let's actually look at that. Um, okay, how do I look at my skills? We'll go to key bindings. I want to go to level up windows. That's P. Alright, here we are. So let's look around. I can eventually get armor training, and it might be useful to do so. So at level 1, I'll be able to wear heavy mail, armors, guns, helms, and heavy boots, so that's actually worth getting, at least for that, so... I might want to level strength on my floor and archer just for that. And I may do that next level, so we'll see. Uh, I'll explore... There's a ruin and there's a fox, so we'll go here. Fire, fire... Wizard's Wild Infusion. Resist... Okay, let's see what this does. Um... Activate this infusion to uh, cure yourself all physical effects and reduce damage. Compared to this one over here, what does it do in comparison? This does 14%. This one does 11 Okay, this is much worse, so I'm not going to bother with that. Just let that get transfigured and be done with it. Um, these boots. One armor, two defense. Range defense, free. These give me free armor, fatigue, uh, resistances. Alright, I'll probably want to keep this just to, once I get the armor training, so... Go this way. There's a fox. And we'll reload. Um... And on to next level, okay. Here we go. Close. Alright, I want to keep this, I think, because, uh... This doesn't give me armor, but it gives me resistances. Uh, that's not really that great. We'll just let the kitchen be provide. Be done with it. And onward! Okay, we got ourselves a skeletal mage. That's not something I want to be nearby. Um, he actually burned me. So, I want to quickly do... This one. And hopefully this will stack. And we'll start healing. Wow, he's hurting me bad. Okay, what can I do to kill this guy? Um, this fire, 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 ow. Kill it. Okay, that mage really hurt. So let's just reload. Um, right, freeze reload. I found out that R is rest, so if you press R, you'll just rest. Unless something like that happens. So... If you're in a situation where you'll rest, you just press R, you'll rest up. Alright, so, um... Don't have anything to look around here, I don't know why I'm looking. There's something to kill. Kill. There's a level up. Okay, reload. Fire. And there we go, we killed him with Mli. Uh, kill that. All right, so I leveled up a little bit there. And this is tenacity. Uh, when wielded, disarm immunity is twenty-one percent. Pinning is twenty-one. Knockback. Okay, that's kind of useful. I'll use this, and we will reload. And now let's just level up so I can get my... Whoopsie. Let's just press P to avoid that happening again. Um, I want to get my strength up to get armor training. 
So I have that. And I want to continue pushing up dexterity. And now I've got one more class point to throw in somewhere. So I'm going to get those, so... Um... Let's go with steady shot, I guess. Just because it's good to be able to, you know, sort of blast things and do a lot of damage when needed. Yes. And because I uh, got an armor training, I should be able to put this on now. There we go. And this will be better than nothing. And we'll just trigger, uh, transfig transfigurify. Get review. Um... Yeah, we'll do this. All right, onward. There's a snake. Another snake. And fire, fire. Uh all right here we go. Guess I can't fire that far, so probably no point shooting that far. This way. Hasn't been a whole lot of frets lit just yet. Ooh. A ruin. Um, fire, disconnect, fire, 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 Lee, and brown snake to the south. All right, there we go. Um, what do we got? We got ourselves a sun fusion ruin. Activate um, this primal air in a race of six and lose selfie creatures. And if the place is powerful, it will also banish magical darkness and will blind any creatures caught inside. Eh, I didn't really think about much of that, so I won't worry about it. Um, this quiver of ash arrows might be useful. Do I have. I don't think I had a quiver to begin with. Oh, there we go. So here's the elm arrows and here's ash arrows. What's the difference? One has, uh, this has more capacity. Okay, that's better because I now have more ammo. So that's better to have. And clarity. This gives more armor, I think. Yes, I want this. So let's do this. That's a cloak. Cool. What does it mean? Uh, stuff I had to care about. And we'll just go on. And now we should be getting to the boss soon, because it's the third level. Oh, rabbit! Kill you. Whoops, I disengaged from him. Kill all them. Whatever. All right, I'm gonna look around now. The boss is a bear. And I think that's just hit him, him right there, so... There's Norgus the Guardian, our ammo bear. This ancient bear long guard the western side of the forest, but as of late he star started going mad, attacking him for Lauren. And he's a dangerous guy, but he's slow moving, so I should be able to deal with him easily. Where did my hotkeys just go? Um... Hotkeys, where are you? Well, I know what I need to do to uh, sort of kill this guy, so let's reload. 
and we'll start firing at these guys wildly, I guess. So, kill this guy, this guy, hit the bear. This way. This way. We're gonna disengage. We fire, fire, fire. And just keep backing up. I actually want to reload. And we'll walk this way and this way and this way. This is where we uh, use the DCS as pillar dancing type of techniques again. But oh well. Uh, fire, fire, fire. Just keep running away. That's something I want to be next to. If possible, I actually want to kill some of this stuff so I don't get, you know, killed by it. Um, disengage. And just fire, fire, fire. Ow. Uh, regeneration probably a good time to do now. You feel those pains again. Okay, cool. Fire. Yep, he uh, tried to hit me there. We're gonna disengage, and we're just gonna fire, 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 fire. Reload. And there I'm getting trapped, but I should be fine to kill him now, so... There he goes. And we got the boss. So, spell hunt remnants. These 1 billion Vorten gaunts have fallen into deep decay. Originally used in a spell hunt, they were often used to destroy arcane artifacts, carrying the world of their influence. And you got the raw recall. I've already got that in our character, so I won't bother reading it. Reload. And fire. Kind of wish I had access to the other stuff over here I could see. I don't know what happened to it. And now that's gotten rid of. Whoops. Um. I'm going to interface and so they can be even resized. It's kind of annoying losing it all like that, but uh, how do I get back to it? Hmm. I wonder if there's a key binding for it. Alright. Rest of a while, I'll talk to the display. Something about your hotkeys exactly, so. That's a little bit of a nuisance. Page up and page down. Okay, let's try that. So, page up. There we go, I got him again. Very useful. Okay, you can go here. And if you want, you actually have several hockey pages where you can just, you know, um... I want to have hockey, so like, you know, one instance or another instance, and then you can just switch them around as needed. Uh, that's the great thing about this game. It is intuitive in many ways. Uh, fire, fire, lee, lee, lee. Kill this snake. It's funny, I can shoot the poison ivy. It's a monster. It must die. And we full. Uh, no. Oh, you're not dead. Uh, he's north. <clears throat> All dead. Kill you. No. And there's a wolf to the south. What is this thing? This is an anti-magic -ma bush. The target is near an anti-magic bush. Granting 20% nature damage, 20% na nature resistance penetration, and negative 12 spell power. Interesting. There's a wolf. Disengaged. 
and we look to be done. All right, let's see what I got. So we got the Spell Hunt Remnant Gloves. This thing will give me uh, resistances, and it can be used to destroy an arcane item of higher tier than the gauntlets costing one power of 150. These once brilliant Vortent Gauntlets have fallen into deep decay. Blah blah, blah that's been decided already. Um, compared to my current ones, they're a lot better, I think. Your arcane spells have been interfered with. Yell is, is a torn world, and the forces of nature can react strongly to arcane energy that seek to manipulate them. Some items and areas are imbued with anti magic, unnatural energy that struck magical abilities and effects. These are even those who have learned to harness anti magic into their own wild abilities and have used them to hunt down and destroy those who protect the planet. Be caster is hostile world you, you, um, you wander in. Okay, so uh, this is an anti magic item, I guess. And your arcane powers are disrupted by your anti magic equipment, so. This is an anti magic equipment, and um, wearing it actually probably makes this uh, something I don't want to cast at all. That might be dangerous, though, so uh, maybe I want to keep the gauntlets that I had. And I'll just keep these two. I might, I might go spell this eventually, but we'll not worry about that just yet. Um, that will give me strength, so put this on. Copper Ring of Fire, I can put on a ring, right? Yes, I can. Um, interesting. Not that I'm going to use it, but interesting. Uh, these will give me armor, stats. These are worth keeping, I guess. And I'll just get review. Iron Mill Armor, compared to uh, this one, what's it do? This one gives me more defense, more armor, more fatigue, but chance of resistance of 50% acid. That's kind of a lot better, I guess, so. Yeah, I'll put that on. Get rid of you. And that should be it, so. Now, something I have yet to use, but something you uh, might want to do when you're like in a dungeon like this, you can use the Rod of Recall to get out. So this rod is made entirely of um, Vortum, infused with raw magical energies that can spend space itself. You've heard of such items before, they are very useful for adventures allowing fast travel. So let's click it. And in four turns, the target is willing to be crawled to the world map, so let's wait. This will all go away. And there we're with this Lair. So there's my archer, he's just willy-nilly wandering around. Magic killed the Norgo Slayer easily enough. And we'll transfer this. Now how am I doing on gold on this character? You are up to 54 gold. It'll take a lot of gold to get the uh, Bellblaze uh, lore from the Shiller in town, so I'm actually going to be saving up for it. It may actually take me several characters just to get enough gold, unless I, you know, just go back into the game willy-nilly and all that. But for now, um, this is enough for this episode. Uh, it's coming up to an hour. Hope you enjoyed. And we'll see what I do next time with this character. Perhaps I'll go into um, the other dungeon and... Uh, well, maybe I'll do other stuff. We'll see. Hope you, hope you enjoyed.